Hi students, I wanted to have a video for you that shows an example problem um, for looking at the natural response of an RL circuit. So here's just an example circuit. Suppose we have some resistors and an inductor. And remember, any complicated circuit, um, like with any network of resistors and inductors, can be simplified into um, basically one um, resistor and one inductor connected to each other. So let me show you how that works. I'm going to put some values here. Suppose this is one third of a Henry and this is two ohms. And then if we kind of marked this as Vx and V0, maybe we were asked to find V0 and Vx for time greater than zero and we also get an initial condition, 10 volts. Okay, so in this situation, this is a source-free RL circuit. So at time equals zero, that's when this inductor is going to discharge. So if you imagine that if this is connected to some current source, where this is I as a function of T, we would have some non-changing current source, a constant, and then at t is equal to zero, suppose that source falls here to zero, and then um, we're gonna have some discharging of our inductor through these resistors here. Okay, so um, this discharge curve here is what we refer to as the natural response. Let's simplify this circuit first. Um, here you can see these two resistors are in series, so they're equivalent to one resistor of value one plus three, four ohms, and that's connected to this inductor, which is in parallel with this two ohm resistor. And then um, if you like to, since this is all the same node, you can put the resistors next to each other so there's the 4 ohm resistor and there's the 2 ohm resistor and then you can see that they're very clearly in parallel like this. And here's the inductor over here. So then um, the equivalent resistance between those two would be 1 over 1 over 4 plus 1 over 2 which is 4 thirds ohms. So that means that these are equivalent to one resistor of value four thirds ohms, and that's connected to our inductor. So now you see we have a source-free RL circuit. Um, initially, this thing is charged up, so it's going to have um, a current stored on it, but no voltage, because if you recall, the equation for voltage across an inductor as a function of time is the inductance value times the change in current. So if we don't have a change in current, so this derivative term would be zero, then um, that means we can have current stored on here, but if this is a constant, the derivative would be zero, so that means we would have no voltage. So in a way, you can imagine that it almost looks like a wire. So if there's no voltage drop across this thing, it looks like a wire. But then um, at t equals zero, now this thing is suddenly going to kind of wake up. And um, if we have a falling source here, this inductor is now going to start to discharge through the equivalent resistance. So um, this thing kind of, as a discharging circuit element, it kind of looks like a, a current source. So this is going to um, discharge the current through the resistors in the circuit. So then by KVL, if we go around this circuit here, starting here and walking around, we would have um, the voltage across the inductor plus the voltage across the resistor is equal to zero. The voltage across the inductor is this equation here, so L times DI DT um, the voltage across this resistor, this is just governed by Ohm's law, so it's just going to be I times R, and that's equal to zero. 
Um, so when I fill these values in here, I'll get my inductance value is one third di dt plus i times four thirds, and that's equal to zero. So this thing you might recognize as a first order ordinary differential equation. So in order to solve this, let's separate variables. So I want to have all of my i terms on one side of the equal sign and all of my t terms on the other side of the equal sign. So let's um, bring this guy over here. We can multiply everything by 3 first, I guess. So this will be di dt is equal to negative 4i. So then um, I'm going to bring the i down here and bring the dt over here. So that leaves me with di over i is equal to negative 4 dt. Now to sort of undo our uh, derivative terms, the opposite of derivative is integral. So if I take the integral of both sides here, that is going to take care of this di and this dt. So over here on the left hand side, um, the integral of i with respect to i is going to be the natural log of i plus some constant. And then over here, the integral of negative 4 dt is just going to be negative 4 t and then this is also going to have some constant. So I'm just going to basically combine these constants. So this is one constant, this is another. These are unknown, so I can just put these together into one big unknown constant. And um, let this be the natural log of i is equal to negative 4t plus k. And maybe here I'll put where k1 plus k2 is equal to k, just to kind of have it clean. Okay, um, so now I have this equation. I'm going to use my initial condition to solve for this constant k. Now use the initial condition, which was that v0 at 0 is equal to 10 volts to solve for k. Okay, um, so if you think about when this is true, this is when um, kind of before that inductor starts discharging, right? So our circuit is before this starts generating a current this way, our current we can say goes this way because we have a voltage across here. This is a voltage across our resistor. Um, and we have nothing that's kind of counteracting that because um, at t equals um, anything less than zero, um, this is going to basically be a wire. So we're only going to have, you know, one direction of current flow here and it just looks like a resistor with a wire. So um, by KVL in this case, if this is not, um, it has no voltage drop across it um, because the change in current is zero, this is going to be um, by KVL negative voltage across the resistor plus voltage across the inductor is equal to zero. Um, but you guys remember that um, this thing in our original circuit is actually in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor, right? And they tell us that the voltage drop across here is V0. So that means that um, I can say that VL at 0 is equal to V0 at 0 is equal to 10 volts. and um, don't be confused about the, it's not really a voltage drop across this, but it's like, it's a difference in potential between this node and this node because we know that's connected um, in parallel with this 2 ohm resistor and they tell us that V0 is equal to 10. Okay, so then 
we can replace this thing here with 10 volts using that initial condition. Um, so what is this going to be, this negative VR? This is going to be negative I at time 0 times this resistance value plus 10 is equal to 0. And so this resistance value we computed here, the equivalent resistance was 4 thirds is equal to negative 10. And that means that we get that I at time 0 is equal to 10 times 3 over 4, which is 7.5 amps. Okay, great. So um, in this basic series circuit, I have a current of 7.5 amps initially when this thing is all charged up and not changing the voltage at all. This is not supplying any current. This is just acting like a wire, but I have 7.5 amps, amps running through here. Okay, great. Um, so this is basically a point. So the point 0, 7.5, where this is my T value and this is my I value, is a point on the current curve. So if I plug this value in to my equation from above, plug into natural log of I equals negative 4T plus K, then using this initial condition I can solve for this K value. So at when I is 7.5, I have T is 0. So that means that the natural log of 7.5 is equal to K. Um, and now if I plug this back into my general equation, then for any time, not just at time equals 0, I have that the natural log of I is equal to negative 4T plus K, which is the natural log of 7.5. Okay, great. So let's solve this thing. Solve for I. Let me bring this over here. I have negative 4T is equal to um, the natural log of I minus the natural log of 7.5. Using the properties of logs, I can write this as the natural log of I over 7.5. So then if I want to undo the natural log, I can make this an exponent on E for both sides, like this. So then the E and the natural log will cancel each other out and I'm left with just I over 7.5 on the right hand side and E to the negative 4T on the left hand side. So then this means that I is a function of T for any time T is 7.5 E to the negative 4T. So that's the current that is in this, this is before T equals zero, this is after t equals 0. Okay, so the current going in this direction in this simple series RL circuit, which is the equivalent of this one here. Okay, great. So we'll need that I to find the voltage drop across the capacitor. So now after time equals 0, we do have a voltage drop across the capacitor because as you can see, our current is now changing with respect to time where this was that max value that was stored on it initially. This is a decaying exponential, so this is our natural response curve coming down like this. Okay, great. So then VL of T is equal to L di dt. So that's going to be our inductor has a value of one-third Henry's. So D derivative with respect to time of 7.5e to the negative 4t. I can bring the 7.5 out. This gives me 1 third times 7.5.
The derivative of e to the negative 4t, I take the derivative of the inside, that gives me negative 4, times the derivative of the outside, gives me e to the negative 4t. So this thing works out to be negative 10 e to the negative 4t, and that's my vl of t. Okay, so my vl of t, if you look at my circuit here, um, this is going in this direction is negative 10 e to the negative 4t. So um, based on if I did KVL around this loop here, so like this, then I can say KVL relates VL to V0, and that is that VL of T plus V0 of T is equal to 0. That's my KVL around that loop. Um, I get negative, I get that V0 of T is equal to positive 10 e to the negative 4 t. Okay, great. So that's the first thing that we were asked for, that v naught of t. Um, the next thing we were asked for in the problem was v x of t. So to find that, um, we can use a voltage divider. So our circuit had, a, this is the v x of t that I want to know. This is a 1 ohm resistor. This is a 3 ohm resistor. And I now know that this voltage here, V0 of t, is 10e to the negative 4t. So that means that across here, I have a V0 of t. So how much of that 10e to the negative 4t goes here, and how much of it goes here? Well, I can use my voltage divider. I can say that the voltage, the proportion of the voltage here with respect to this entire branch is 1 ohm over 1 ohm plus 3 ohms times the voltage at the node, 10 e to the negative 4 t. So this is going to be 1 fourth times 10 e to the negative 4 t. So Vx of t should be 2.5e to the negative 4t. Okay, great. So we have our two voltages that we were asked for. These are both decaying exponential voltages um, across here and across here that um, are kind of provided by this um, inductor here that is discharging through these resistors. Um, so that's an example of a problem um, where we're asked to evaluate the natural response of an RL circuit. Let me know if you have questions about that.